What's up guys, Shane with Figadec 3D Printing and today I'm checking out some hips filament from Kodak. So welcome back guys. You've seen some of my Kodak reviews in the past for the different filaments. They've just started their 3D printing endeavor just this past March and they're getting deep into it now. They're releasing lots of different filaments and the latest one they've sent me here is their hips. Now this is in white and hips is high impact polystyrene. Polystyrene? I'm not a scientifically word person, so polystyrene, maybe? Either way, high impact. So this stuff's supposed to be strong. I know Maker Muse said that he is really starting to like hips filament and I think he has, maybe it's one of his uh, cube printers. I forget what it was. Now, high impact, this stuff sounds like it should be pretty strong. I've actually never, ever tried hips before. It's never come in a maker box, which is usually what I would get it from, and no company has ever sent it to me. So this will be a very, very first for me to try and test this stuff out and see what it can do, how strong it is, and actually how to print with it. So I'm looking forward to having an entire roll here to play with. Let's start with the box. Super branded, as you've seen in all the past videos, there is a Kodak brand on every side of this thing. Here on the side, it's telling us it's white. It's 11-4001. I'm guessing that is the color code for the white they're using. Hips, 1.75 liters, 750 grams, 235, plus or minus five degrees. A Little bit of wiggle room there. And then they have their SKU, their little uh, QR code thing here for more details on their site. We open it up, another Kodak symbol. Is that going the right way? Yep. And we take that out, and again, got the Kodak symbol, the same sticker on the inside as is on the outside, the hips filament, and I love it, it is a Ziploc bag. It's great. I've said it so many times, when spools come in a Ziploc bag, it's great for the average person. I have containers full of filament here because I get so much of it, and I have a way to store all of it. Not everyone has that. You buy a roll of filament, you need something to store it in. Having the bag with a silica pack in it is a great thing to have. And granted, you can use a Ziploc bag, but when it comes with the filament, that's just such a bonus. All right, so there's the bag. Mmm, it's got a unique smell to it. Ugh. Silica pack, and here it is. Very much white, filled to the brim. I mean, all the way to the brim. This spool is filled. This, it seems like a little more than some of the other ones have been. Uh, it's a pretty decent wind. Their spool is nice. It is an injection mold, one piece spool. A brand again on here. And here on here they have the hip sticker again telling us that it's plus or minus, it's 235 plus or minus five degrees centigrade. So that should be interesting. Again, I'm super interested in how this is gonna print or what I can do with it, what its limitations are for overhangs and things like that. I don't know anything about it. But hopefully, once I print this roll, I'll have some more information for you. So you guys, check back here in just a second and I'll have some prints for you. Okay, so hips material is very, very new to me. I've never once printed a hips before, so it was a very big learning thing for me. But it actually printed like great out of the bag. Like I couldn't understand. So I went on Codex website, checked a couple settings there, went on to, I believe it was like uh, Matter Hackers, and checked out like their little recap on hips to see what they talked about, just to make sure I would have settings, you know, correct for most of it. And it, it just printed really well. I had a little bit of issues with this model just because I didn't do enough uh, layers on it and it actually split. So hips kind of behaves a little bit like ABS where you don't want to have any breezes going on it. Otherwise the model will split on you. This is the only one that did that because it took quite a long time. This is I think two or 300% scale of the twisted tower on Thingiverse, which the original is very small. I think this was 200% of it. And it came out great, but again, it just split once it had finally cooled, and that's never any good things. But, I mean, everything else was actually really good. It held really, really well. A little bit of warping, but it held really well to the Anycubic Ultra Base. All this was printed on the Anycubic i3 Mega because the Folgetech FT5, which is fully enclosed, was already dedicated to another filament. And I figured, well, let me give this a shot, see how it turns out, and if I need to dedicate the 55 to printing this, then we'll just put that on there and go, what, that's why I really wish I had two enclosed printers to print like these tough materials. Uh, but I printed a bunch of different things to try out a few different, you know, how the mechanical properties of this film would work out, how it would do in vase mode, how it would do with something that's print in place, standard testing, you know, a couple of little things here. But yeah, so let's uh, just take a closer look and see how they came out. Okay, so first up here is my MakerCoin, which came out pretty well. 
there was a little bit of warping like you can barely tell but it was just a tiny little bit on the edges tiny little bit enough that it kind of screwed up on some of these roundups here like the overhang of going up the cog some of them are a little rougher than others but overall they're in pretty good condition a support wants to stick to this stuff pretty good like I can get the rest of this out using probably an exacto knife, but most of it peeled off without any issue. There's a little bit in this one too. So you kind of need to get an exacto knife just to get off the fine details of your, your dense infill. Cause you also should do a dense infill on top of your support to ensure you get a nice flat surface for the actual print to print onto. Other than that, bottom line was great. A little bit of lifting there, but not too much at all. Nothing like it didn't come off the print. And then on top, it looks good. I might have over extruded a little bit. As you see, kind of, it's kind of extreme here with the details you can see. Out here is really smooth, but inside, I don't know, there's just, I think I over extruded it like just a little bit because this is also super pronounced, you know, like the ringing inside of there. Well, I mean, it's not ringing, it's just the, how the layers go in the circular pattern. So, but yeah, either way, I mean, it was a good first test of the filament. Okay, then I did a 200% Benchy just because it's so much easier to see the details in these big ones. And I'm not looking to do tiny stuff. Uh, but the CT3D XYZ came out great. It did really good bridging over this. So this does usually two layers and then uh, it does the rest. But you kind of see like this off colorness here. So this front part here lifted and then this back part here lifted just a little, like it's, really hard to see the bend but you can see it's a little bit rounded right here the front you can all see there just a little bit comes down so it did lift just a little bit uh, not too much though but either way it was pretty good you can see the hashtag 3d benchy there in the back maybe yep there it is a uh, the little hole down there the flag holder everything here it did pretty good over the doorway and whatnot uh, there's a little bit of strings here and there but you know, nothing to write home about. Actually did the, the smokestack here really, really well. Very surprised with that. And it filled everything in really nice. You can see the deck, the roof, the floor in here, up here. Everything just filled in really nice. So again, pretty good print. Not too bad at all. All right, so I do something a little bit of a longer print and with a little bit more, you know, other different challenges. So this one's a lot of overhangs. So it sits down flat on your print bed like this. The chin, the nose, and the brow here right above the eyebrows is pretty steep. And you will see issues with some filaments. As you can see right here, there are two little strings, which I can easily just kind of pop off there and boom, they're gone. But there's a little bit of rippling in there as you can see. And then the bottom was good, except for, again, right here, little diff coloration, and right here, some discoloration, and just along the front of this. So ever so slightly you can see that little angle right there ever so slightly this did lift as well so uh, this was the 105 degree bed too so i had to be pretty doggone hot other than that it turned out pretty well you know uh, my retraction in this one was a little too high and it's hard to tell on the white i apologize for that but there are some holes here in the back of where the retraction was just too high for this filament so i definitely could have dialed that down a little bit but either way his face looks great I already talked about this a little bit, but you can see here where it's split in there. This was not dropped. This is just the filament actually splitting when it dried. So that was kind of disappointing. Uh, other than that, it did really good in this like rock foundation, but you do see some holes here in the steps. The steps are pretty hard. Even most filaments would deal. So you do like a higher infill on there. So there are some holes in there that just could not be avoided. But again, really nice and flat bottom, tiny bit of lifting here on the very outer edges, but it still held for the most part. And the bricks also came out great. I did knock it against something, so two of the tower teeth up there kind of had fallen off. But again, very, very impressed with this. I did learn some of my settings, so there's no holes in here from at least any of the retractions. And I did slow it down a little bit, so we get much more consistent extrusions throughout. Finally, I just did a really quick honeycomb vase. Uh, I have this on there. I just adjusted my temperatures. This one actually was no lifting whatsoever. And it was with four bottom layers and obviously a single perimeter on there. Uh, it, it really worked out well. You can flex it a little bit, but it, it does tend to crack. Like this is a, I don't know, just in this particular application, this is not the strongest filament. Or maybe if I would have upped my temperature more, they call for 235. I printed it at 235 or 240 for most of these. So actually it was 235 for most. I think I printed one, the redo of the maker coin. I, uh, for some reason it was set too low. So I set 240 just to try it. And that's how that ended up coming out. But yeah, this was a 235, maybe a little hotter. Maybe if I printed hotter, I'd get a little bit better layer adhesion. But either way, I'm happy with how this came out. 
and yeah it, it worked out well um, in the vase mode all right and my little camera died but i did want to show i did do the print in place 3d printed wrench that i've done in several filaments now it's really good to see how a print in place will work with different types of filaments what's needed i mean it's all pretty much the same g code just different temperatures uh, so i'm very surprised at how well this actually did it was very easy to break away the support on this came out great i'm actually also surprised at how well the actual insert the sliding insert here held its form remarkably well in there it's, again it's, i can't really show you this far away but it actually did a really good job of holding its form and staying round and flat and the part's supposed to be flat very little uh, sagging on that but it was also super easy to actually break away the screw on here with some filaments require a little bit more force this one no force at all it just worked without really a problem i liked it so what i was gonna say about this filament uh, it is super duper white like compared to some other white filaments i've been testing recently it's really white uh this does emit an odor so be aware of that i'm not i didn't actually see what the toxicity ever was if it like abs it behaves in, as abs in some ways in other ways it doesn't so just be aware keep it a ventilated area because it did put out quite an odor so i'm thinking there's a little bit of toxicity in this but that being said um you know just be aware of that and get on the printing Oh, and I did, I did mention, I, I did print this at 235 on the nozzle. I printed 105 on the bed. I did it at 60 moments a second on that printer and everything came out with any problems. You know, there's no under extrusions, you know, except for my retraction settings on the Moai. But other than that, it just turned out really, really good. So good job Kodak on this filament. That being said, Kodak did send me this filament free of charge. They didn't pay me, I didn't pay them. For the purpose of this review, uh, along with several other different types from them, so I thank them for giving me the opportunity to test out some of their 3D printing stuff. And then that's gonna wrap it up, guys. So thank you for tuning in, and thank you, Kodak, again, for sending me this filament. If you guys think it's pretty cool that Kodak is making 3D printing products, give this video a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Either way, leave me a comment down below which I thought about the filament and about Kodak and just things I do here on the channel. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys want to stay in tune what's going on, hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell icon, you'll get an email notification every time I upload new content, do a live stream. And also, if you do that and you have the YouTube app on your phone, you'll get a push notification if you have it enabled whenever I do uploads or you know, live stream stuff like that. If you guys want to support me financially, down below me is a Patreon link. You can donate me there on a monthly basis. Thanks to my current Patreons. If you want to just do a one-time donation, Streamlabs, buy me a coffee down below. And if you want to do your daily shopping online, use some of my fill links down below. A little slice of what you buy comes to help me at the channel at no cost to you. I thank everyone for using those. Uh, it really is nice to see that. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time, happy printing.